Okay. Well, I, um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Tasha Powell, and I am a food stylist. I'm a trained chef, and uh, I also run culinary tours in Marrakesh and in Provence and in Sicily. And uh, since the, the pandemic hit, I've been teaching Zoom classes, and I've been doing that since July, and it's been able to keep me in the game and expand my horizons and my, my talents, and then collaborate with amazing friends and vendors like Lynn Newberg, who I'll introduce in just a moment. But so it's been uh, an extraordinary time and it's been pushing me beyond my limits with technology and lighting and cameras. And uh, just a note on that, we do have a bird's eye view. If, if everybody can see bird's eye view, can we have a, a thumbs up, thumbs up? Okay, our demos will be here. And then we have a second camera on us. So the speaker view is, and you can switch back and forth individually if you like. Um, so, so we want you to have the best of the presentation. So yesterday we did a Zoom masterclass and uh, it was an hour and a half long and we're gonna give you the condensed version this morning. We'll try to pack it into 20 minutes. Um, and Caroline was, uh, was there yesterday and thanks for coming back, we appreciate it. Um, but we have uh, all kinds of demos to show you today. So um, a year and a half ago, I was at a trade show in downtown Los Angeles, and I met Lynn Newberg, and she has a company called Easy Leaf Products. So she was demoing edible gold and silver, and I was, I was drawn to her in her booth, and I was fascinated, and then I started talking to Lynn, and she had this bubbly, sparkly personality, and from then on, I knew I wanted to have a connection with her and work with her. And I was just so fascinated with the history of gold and silver and how it's edible. So that was a year and a half ago. We've been in touch and we've done some projects together. And now we've done a collaboration. So we're, we're teaching this class together. So we will show you today cocktails, some savory food and a lot of desserts uh, because the edible gold and silver can be used in every course. And we will also show you some decor ideas. And so without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to my friend and colleague, Lynn Newberg. Hello, hi. Welcome everybody. I'm just gonna take this off for a minute so I can speak and be heard. Um, it's been honestly very nice to, to work with Tasha. It's been a, a pleasure. Um, what we're gonna do today is take food from the ordinary to the extraordinary. Um, I've been doing this nonstop in the food and beverage industry since at least 2004. Um, typically people would think that gold or edible gold or silver would be used just on desserts. And most certainly it is, but also sweets, savories and cocktails, drinks, coffees, everything can be gilded from lobster tails to martinis. Um, Obviously, we can't take you through, through the full repertoire, but we're going to try our best here to give you like a little overview of all three categories so you'll feel confident. And I want you to feel confident just uh, embellishing with gold and silver because it's not difficult. Um, just so you know, quickly, everything is edible. Um, FDA approved, LGA approved for in Europe, and everything is kosher. We're gonna be working with a few different forms of gold. Uh, the most typical form was always what you would see is in a sheet. Um, and we're gonna be, oh, I'm gonna lift it up. I'll show you in just a minute. Sheets, um, we've got shakers, so you can shake gold out really easily. And uh, petals, I've got a spray. And I've also got little shaped hearts and stars. And we're gonna take you through everything and, and show you just a little bit of everything. So you feel confident, you can embellish. And just for those who may not know, so gold and silver, they're inert, so they don't react. Right, them. why so it's they're edible. Totally they're total, um, you can only eat 23 and 24 karat gold or silver. Uh, you don't wanna go to your art store and get 18 karat or, um, anything like that because there's other alloys that are melted down in it. So you really wanna to stick to 23 and 24 karat because it's pure, inert, passes through your system. And the most important thing, I shouldn't forget quickly, why do we, why do, we do this? Um, why do we use gold? That's a good so, question. Um, 
I traced this back all the way past the 13th century. And really, it was considered a great sign of respect to honor guests coming into your home, into your banquet table, now our dinner table. So one course at least shows respect to your guests. So that's really where the tradition came from. And I, I just want to make this an open uh, conversation. We have a small amount of people on the call today. And I know Rebecca has been in the world of gastronomy for quite some time. Uh, so she knows a lot about uh, oh, good. Michelin star dining and cooking. <laughs> so please feel uh, everyone, yeah, to if you have a chip question, in. Chime, in. Yeah. chime in, unmute yourself. Yesterday we had you know, over 40 people on the call. So this is a much more intimate group. So jump in. Um, but so we're going to start with a cocktail today and what what better tradition at least for americans we like eggnog cocktails and we have this set up for you can you see on the bird's eye view now everybody there oh, we perfect. go perfect thank you so um caroline i know you saw this yesterday so bear with us but you can take any cocktail and as beautiful as this is, and, and uh, Tasha created this cocktail using a vanilla, look, uh, cook, Great, it's a Grand Marnier. Grand Marnier, vanilla Grand Marnier, and an eggnog. So our thought was, oh, okay, this is beautiful. Er everybody can do this. But I thought what we would do is show you three different ways to garnish this particular cocktail, all right? Uh, number one, uh, we could go very um, easy and straightforward and simply dust it with a little bit of gold. And when you do that, you just tap it out because that way, if you shake your shaker, it's going to go everywhere. <laughs> you don't want to do that. So you really just want to tap this out. And Tasha is going to show you I'm just how it's this floating up. on top of there. So it's gold and sparkling and it's gorgeous. And um, I'm going to hand over one of my tools to Lynn now, which is a giant forcep. It looks like an operating room. Uh, but this will come in handy for the star anise. Right. Now, we were kind of excited this year. I'm going to show you a few that we've already done. And then I'm going to, can you see this? This beautiful star anise. We have gilded them already. And I'm going to do another one for you right now. So you can see exactly what we're doing. So I'm taking the star anise, okay? One thing you should know about gold and silver, it is going to adhere to anything that's remotely moist, okay? So you can only know that a star anise, if you touch it, is completely dry. So what I've done is I'm taking just a touch, this happens to be honey, but you could do agave. And the reason I chose that is just simply to give the gold something to really adhere to. So take this, and I've already taken the liberty of sprinkling out a little bit of gold from my shaker into a little dish so I could show you what it looks like. And I take my little star anise, and because I've got this little bit of honey on it, I'm going to dip it into my... Wow, that's gorgeous. Into my gold. Here's, oh, here's my tongs. And here you can see that the gold has just adhered to where the honey was. And we thought we would just. Oh, oh wow. that, that's just so beautiful. Oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. I don't know if everybody can see that, okay? Yeah. And then, well, we know Caroline has visited me in Los Angeles. I was lucky to have her as a guest, and I know she loves whipped cream. So this is in honor of Caroline from Perfectly Provence. We're going to put some whipped cream on your individual glass here, and we're going to let Lynn do her magic. So the, also, a uh, piping bag is one of my essentials. This is reusable. And uh, I have a star tip on it, but I have a giant one because I'm always piping something. <laughs> uh, I don't own one. I'm so, <laughs> I'm gonna I gotta get, get a lesson. Well, so we used the shaker for this and then we did the little star anise. So you know what? I wanna use, I wanna give this just one petal. And this is a little box 
and the gold comes already in a petal form. So you don't have to take a sheet and rip a piece off or anything like that, for those of you who are familiar with sheets. And this is pretty simple to do, there, so I can talk. Just take one little piece of gold, you can see with my tweezers, and I just literally dance it right on top. Wow, that's stunning. And it's very, it's stunning. if you can see this from different angles, it just kind of really floats on top. So with these cocktails, what we've done is shown you how to, how to embellish three different ways. And while we're on cocktails quickly, I just want to show you all how you can rim a flute. Um, you're almost towards New Year's. Um, and you're gonna be serving champagne at least that night, we know. I take a little pop-up sponge that's like this, and I get it wet. And I've already dampened this this morning, and I think that's wet enough. I'm gonna dash and put a little more water on it. Give me one second here. It, I just dried out a little. And I'm just going to give you a sneak preview to the next, uh, the next kind of oh. decor because we're using lotus root. Um, we're also going to use, I know in France we call this fiselis, here we call it uh, gooseberries. gooseberries. I kind of like fiselis, but I know that's part of the French tradition for dessert. So this is coming soon. Okay, so I've got my sponge wet, I popped it up, and you can take actually any glass, all right? and just moisten moisten it and then take it either i mean i've sprinkled mine out a little uh wooden bowl but you can put it on a piece what i typically will re recommend is on a piece of parchment paper or wax paper so that if you've got your little sprinkles left over you can just funnel it right back into your shaker then you just simply twist it in place and there you have it. You've got your glass rimmed in gold or silver as, as you may have it, whatever, whatever you decide to do. I think that Tasha also pulled out for us to take a look at for garnishes, um, the lotus root and the gooseberries. Okay. It's a little bit too early for us to drink this. Well, you never <laughs> know. It's, it's five o'clock somewhere, right? <laughs> Right. We have to pop this open. Ah, it's five o'clock there. Um, so again, here we, with uh, a, a different kind of uh, a garnish, you can take a lotus root. These are poached. So again, I'm redundant. Anything remotely moist, gold and silver is going to stick to. I don't need to put anything on this. Um, the star anise was something totally different. This is already quite um, moist. So what I do, and here's my paper already over here I have you can see I have some parchment already out so I sprinkled my gold and simply take my tweezers and lay it down and there you have it that's gorgeous a beautifully gilded lotus root and we already cut the little slit in it so on whatever glass you choose. I'm just gonna put it on here for inspiration. There you have it. Look at that. There you go. Oh yeah. Can everybody see that? Can you see it? Thumbs up. Yeah. So the lotus root, it really is quite lovely. Um, we did one in silver. So you can also do it in silver. You can do it in gold or you can do it in a mixture of both. But I think for the lotus root, just one or the other would be good. So what do you think it is? Oh, well, these are beautiful. I've seen these done on, on oh, to float on a glass like this. And what we did is we took our gooseberries and unfortunately these were already taken out of the husk, but same thing, take your gooseberry, you can do one, you can do both. And gooseberries are also tacky and a little sticky. So, you know, again, don't have to worry about putting anything on those, but here we go. I'll just show you how it goes, how it looks. This yeah. is beautiful on a martini glass, by the way. So that's great for, yeah. uh, for Christmas, for Hanukkah, so we're for just, New Year's Eve. Right. We're just trying to abbreviate it and get, get it all in here, <laughs> not keep you here for an hour and a half today, okay. right? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this away. 
And we're going to go to the hors d'oeuvre. Ah, yes. Okay. So, um, what we have next, because we, we're going from cocktails now, we're going to, we bought some uh, Kalakov caviar yesterday, and this is extra special. So, uh, maybe we can have a, a view. Uh, thank you. So, I have some, some, you can either use creme fraiche. Or, or sour cream. Creme fraiche is, 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 is available here. It's just not as uh, prevalent as, in, it, it, as it is in France. I, I love going to the French grocery stores because you have rows and rows of creme fraiche and, and yogurt. I mean, it goes for days. For days. For days. Really? Oh, yeah. Here, there's one brand <laughs> and one store that carries Maybe it. two. I don't know. Maybe two. <laughs> That's right. It is Los Angeles. So I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, black caviar on these blinis, which I made yesterday. And, uh, and then I'm gonna let Lynn do her magic on caviar because this is a nice way to really honor your guests. And uh, it could be used for an apéro, an apéro dînatoire, or uh, just, just a little appetizer for your, your meal. So I'm gonna let you do your magic okay. with that. I'll take these away. Well, the, I mean, these are just beautiful as is, but again, you just use the word, you want to honor your guests coming to your, your banquet table. I personally think with this, because the star of the show is really this amazing Russian caviar, I, I again would just want to dance one little petal on top. Um, but let me also say this. Um, there you go. If you have, now we're all in lockdown. So we're going to have just a couple people, right? At, come be with us or family. But let's say you were having a party and you had dozens of people and you really needed to do something quickly. Again, that's when you go to your shaker and you go, just tap out a touch. And obviously you can do dozens very quickly. Whereas with the pedal, it's going to take just, uh, you know, a little bit more time. So those are the two ways I would handle it. And my favorite is really just with one little petal danced on top. So that's that's how we do that's how we do caviar. I also do sushi this way. You can roll a sushi roll. Oh, what a great idea! Yeah, yeah. And when you do, if you were to do a sushi roll, um, and it's sliced, you know, and there's six slices there, I would just gild one, one of the slices and I would roll it. And I'll show you how we roll how we roll things in gold. Ah, here we come with our, with our fruits and our veggies, okay. Okay, so we, we've had cocktails and we had uh, an appetizer, but we also, before we sit down at the table, we wanted to decorate the table, and Lynn has got these great ideas for pomegranates, for pears, for apples. Some of this we did yesterday, as you can see. Look at this okay. apple, is that just so gorgeous? Yes. And we did a, Tomatillo, which is in the same family as um, the gooseberries. And what I wanted to say is, you know, gooseberries come like this. Gooseberries are a smaller version and they come in a little husk. So you could do this with gooseberry, which I love, by the way. They used to sell them in the husk here in Los Angeles. And as of late, all I can find are the ones like we just showed you already um, peeled. So silly why they peel them. So again, this has already got a natural little tap to it. So I do not need to put anything on here. I take the husk and I peel it back. So you imagine you could be doing this with a gooseberry or a tomatillo, right? Here's our book of gold. I think you can all see it right there. Let me move my sprinkles away. And you open it to a page. That I don't, it's not empty. There we are. Here we go. Here's a page, full sheet of gold, right? And you simply, I'm not going to need that whole piece for here. So I'm going to hold down half of that sheet and then I'm simply going to roll it and roll it. And you can see that because of the natural stickiness, it's already adhering to my tomatillo 
quite easily, almost like glue, believe it or not, because they're sticky. Then you roll back up your husk, and there you have a gilded tomatillo. The other thing that I thought was really important to show you is how to gild a piece of fruit. Um, piece of fruit, you may think, ah, oh, it's dry. Well, it is, but you take your apple, your pear, this we did yesterday. You can see we did this yesterday. I'm going to show you how I did it. You take whatever piece of fruit you want to gild and you just really massage it. And, and what that does is get out its natural um, oils almost. And then also it, it uh, if there's any wax on it and say, same approach that I use with this tomatillo as I'm just going to roll it right on a sheet of gold. And so I have a question. Lynn. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so our, our North American audience uh, was able to order starter kits and uh, we have in the starter kits, we have the, the gold sheets and we have some uh, edible luster and uh, it, it's basically in some, some sprinkles. So can our friends in France and part of the Network Provence, can they also order that? Of course, of okay. course they can. So we'll share that information just in case you'd like to, to order it. So I, I know you were watching, but let me just explain too here. When I opened that sheet of gold, okay, I, I used this paper, which is a glycine type paper that nothing will stick to for my pressure. So I took it and I rolled it. And I rolled it and I rolled it. And that is how, it's all you need to do. And then I like to kind of rub it in my hands and burnish it back so it almost looks Venetian. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can. So that is how you gild a piece of fruit. And a little history of this, Italians always uh, believed that they would line a wedding uh, table, the bride and groom's table with um, greens and then stud it with apple, or pomegranates. Oh. Uh, pomegranate, of course, is fertility with all the seeds. And the gold uh, represented wealth and well-being and prosperity for the groom. So uh, it was always on the bridal table, gilded pomegranates. And I do it myself um, at home when I'm having a big party. Uh, I'll put actually olive branches down the middle, serpentine them down my table. I'm lucky to have about a 16 foot table and, and stud it with uh, gilded fruit. So, ah. So we we're, go. we're going into the dessert phase and we have quite a few desserts to show you, but I wanted to, um, as we spoke uh, the other day, uh, the French have a tradition and please jump in for those who, of you who know more than I do about this, but the 13th dessert tradition from the south of France. It's the 12 apostles in Christ. That's what's represented. That's what we, that's what we learned yesterday. Yes, but I am a, a non-traditional traditionalist. I love having the tradition of wherever I'm living and, and of all my past experiences, but I always kind of make it my own too. But we have 13 desserts. Uh, we did many desserts because we thought it would be a good way to honor our guests and give them choices of yeah, what they want to eat. Yeah, absolutely. So you'll see all kinds of things, fruit tarts, petit fours, uh, uh, tiramisu, and some cheesecakes. So uh, I know, Lynn, you're going to elevate this level, and I hope you can still all see this. But we've got quite a variety for our, our French tradition. So what we, what again, what I try to do is just say, hey, this is easy. Don't worry about it. Don't panic. Um, I think that we could, here's some edible silver, which I think is kind of fun. Take it again. Another little trick. Sometimes if you're worried that you're going to shake out too much, you can always tape off a few of these holes. I've done that dozens of times. You can just, again, put right on. Very easy. Anybody can do that. I took, I have one other item that I think would be kind of interesting. I have spray gold and spray silver. It's pure. This is, and it comes in an aerosol can. And what you can do, there's two tips. One is a wider mist and one half, 
that comes this way. And then you can put on the little tube, what do you call it? straw, 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 yeah, straw tube. And then you can really just wow. aim it wherever you want to oh, aim wow. it. And let me see if you can see this. What I did is just dust this with a touch of silver. And this is edible, this is kosher, this is all, can you see that? It's so delicate, but I don't know. It just almost looks like a snow cap, that silver. It's beautiful. It does. I'm going to um, do a little test on the lights. To okay. See that is better. Then I think back to our star anise. Oh, this is a cheesecake. And I thought it would be fun to not use the honey this time. But how about if we used our, one of our micas, one of our powders. You can mix your mica powder, gold, and it comes in silver and rose gold, um, with a little bit of vodka, or I think you used gin, didn't you? I used gin. Okay, with the, with the alcohol. I use a of gin Aha. in the household. I do it's like gin. Favorite. It's a little juniper, I love that. I love the smell of gin, actually. So what I'm doing here is painting the top of this one. Whereas with the cocktail, we just did a little gold in the center. This one, I got enough moisture here with the, the gin <laughs> that I can smell. And I'm painting the top of our star anise. And you can then plant it right on, oh, that's pretty, right on top of your, I don't know if you can see that, completely Oh, that looks covered. Gorgeous. Yeah, gorgeous. yeah, completely covered. And while you're at it, if you want to garnish your, your, your little tray a little more, don't be afraid to just get really creative. And again, sometimes less is best. You can just do the little edges of this greenery. Now, would I be able to use this for my bouche de Noël, which we're going to show a little yep, bit later? Yeah, sure oh, can. This is going to be great. So there you go. Look at that just just ever so slightly i mean you don't even have to hit it very all over the place just a little bit anybody can do that that's gorgeous are you going to put that on the plate well i thought it would be kind of fun to put it i thought underneath yeah okay i thought i would do it underneath fantastic idea and what here again I we i danced one little petal right on top of here and I actually painted the edge of the um, lime. I don't know if there's another one here. It doesn't. But again, I just picked it up and took it and edged it on the edge of the lime. Make it easy for anybody who wanted, who wants to do that. Oh, look at this. She's so efficient. Just giving me a piece of lime. Can't believe it. I just want you to be able to there we go. That. So here we go. That is a, that's a stunner, I'm telling you. Just edge it ever so slightly. And there you go. We have a, a few more things to show you, um, but we wanted to just pause for a moment and see if anyone had some questions or yeah. comments. We really want to make this interactive. Yeah, absolutely. If you have a question, you can unmute yourself and just jump in, or if you know more about the the dessert traditionnel uh, from Provence, let us know. Anybody? Rebecca? Um, I, I think I'm listening to the professionals. I'm, over to you. Okay. Very, very, very attractive and very stunning. And thank you, thank you. Certainly looks very festive. You know, the, the, the whole purpose behind our class is to make this more accessible. When, when you have a few of the products and you have some brushes, um, you too can really uh, you know, up the level of your your presentations, which is always nice. I mean, that is stunning. I mean, when I when I brought them out, I was already you know impressed with with the thirteen desserts. But now that I see how gilded and gorgeous they are, I don't I don't know if I even want to eat them. They're too pretty. To They're eat. too gorgeous. I don't know. I'm 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 lusting after that cheesecake myself. <laughs> well, thank you. You know, I'm gonna just hand you this book. You know, Lynn uh, is is a food historian she knows so ah. much about food and she's got this great book that i we wanted to mention to you just 
if anyone can find this book, it's amazing. It's called Charlemagne's Tablecloth, and it's about King Charlemagne. And he threw, as you can see, these huge banquets. And as you all know, they would go on for days and days. They would eat for days. There could be 50 chefs in the kitchen. At any rate, um, right, right around the 13th century, they learned to do two things with these banquets. One, melt sugar, form it into vessels. They ate the vessels. And then number two, they started to be really creative with what they were gilding. They would gild geese's beak and sturgeon and drinks and just about everything you can imagine. And if you can see, I've loved this book. I've dog-eared so many different references in here on how gold was used on food and drink. So um, it's just probably one of my favorite books. I left it here with Tasha so she could go through it. And uh, it's a winner. So if anybody finds it, uh, Fletcher is the author. And you'll have this online, so yes. you don't have to jot anything down. Um, oh, okay. So this is going to be fun. Um, I, I, there is another product that we have that is called Luster and Shimmer. All right. It looks totally white in this little tub, correct? And Lynn, can you make a comment on the types of brushes you use? Because uh, I, I'm a painter and I, I've got out my painting brushes, but I think I'm, I need I, new ones, by the way, new ones because it's edible. Um, but I, I wanted to know your take on brushes. My take on brushes. I tend to use clean, new, soft uh, makeup brushes. Uh -huh. okay. Like ones that have been used, uh, eyeshadow or, um, you know, they're new, they're clean, and they're soft. They're very soft. So that way, um, when you brush it on anything, you, you, you've just got a really soft hand. And I think that's what's important here. Um, I'm going to show you what, um, what we did here. If you're going to use it, these are also, you should know. These are the only micas and only powders on the market that are edible and also kosher. They come with LGA and certification. So um, anybody has any questions about that, of course, it's, it's all online. But to gild with these, take your little makeup brush and just sometimes less is best. You just pick it up and here's a chocolate fig correct? And just brush it on, less is best. And you can see that it goes from chocolate to now chocolate with a beautiful sheen. It's so subtle. It's so beautiful. And you can just see the, the difference. It used to be solid. And now we also did one, one with red and I've got it in blue. Uh, you you know the light is picking it up. You yeah. can see the the, yeah. the red and, and the gold. And in camera. person, it's in real life, it's even. And you can do the same thing. I have been selling a ton of this to uh, pastry houses, and they've been gilding the top of their macaroons. Oh, I mean, yeah. I know that you can see that. I think yes, yes, very and shiny, then, very. Nice. So you can embellish, and again, this does not need any water. Okay, um, you can mix it in your spray guns. If anybody's, uh, if you have any uh, members that are professional cooks, you can mix it in your spray gun and spray it. But it. I have had tremendous luck with um, brushing it on. Uh, the other thing that I really like, and it's just a very delicate, these are, let me hold that. There we go. These are, 24 karat little gold stars. Now, something I want to show everybody, just in case, I want to show everybody the trick with Avion. Now, if you were making these yourself or, or any, any dessert you were making yourself, you would want to wait till it came out of the oven or out of a mold and it still had a touch of tack on it because gold's going to stick to anything with a little bit of moisture. So these are, don't have any moisture left. We didn't make these, I bought these, all right? Just for purposes of, of instruction. So I know probably nothing's gonna, gonna stick there, right? So my best trick is a little Avion 
or any kind of uh, water that you might have. And just a breath. I mean, a breath, not, not any more than that of moisture. And then let me show you. I will go ahead and I'm going to put this at the edge of the plate so you can see. I will. Oh, those are stunning. Those are 24 karat little gold stars. I'm going to just and again, that's extraordinary. And anybody can do that. And anybody can do that. So that's easy. So Lynn, we have we have three more things to show our, our Network Provence group. Okay. Do you guys have time to see? We've got two grand finales and one tart tart town. Do you guys have time for that? Uh, Rebecca, you're muted. Yeah. Um, yes, go ahead. I'm fine. Okay. I'm, sure. I'm enjoying myself. I hope everyone else is. <laughs> well, uh, thank you. It, it's hard for us to, to cut the class down so small because we're so excited about everything that you do. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I can understand. So I, I have a lot of recipes from yesterday's class and Caroline sometimes publishes those recipes. So um, for the ones that are already published, I'll send you the, the links because uh, uh, I love working with Caroline because her site, Perfectly Provence, just keeps me in Provence. I mean, mentally, I'm there part of the day, every day. So um, I appreciate my collaboration with Caroline. Um, but I made a tart tartan. I did a little research. What I love about the culinary world, it's endless learning. I mean, I'm learning something new every day. And uh, a traditional tart tartan is made with apples, but I like to mix it up. So I, I made one with bananas. You can also use pears. And I read that it was developed by two sisters called the Tata sisters, because I was always wondering, it's hard for me to pronounce it, Tart Tata. What is Tata? Well, it's a family name. So I made a Tart Tata using puff pastry. It's, it was super easy. I caramelized, I caramelized the bananas, and I used a little bit of cardamom and a little bit of cinnamon just to have some some fall flavors and I made this tart tartan and it is very rustic. Um, so you, you caramelize it and then you flip your puff pastry on top of it, you let it cool and then you flip it back around. And here it is, but I leave it to Lynn because I know she'll make it extra special. Well, I, I think, you know, whenever it comes to doing something like this, I go, okay, there's a couple options. There's gold, there's silver, that's a personal, um, uh, decision. So either one, they're both both fine to use. I, I tell you what I thought would be fun with this one is to hit it with a little gold so we would give it just a mist so that when you look at it, you actually see just the faintest little flecks of gold. And I, I mean, I thought that is perfect, but you can also take a sheet of gold this is my favorite part. <laughs> and you can, you can, um, I call this the Marchese effect because Chef Marchese used to lay a sheet of gold. I, I went through so much gold, I'm looking for a sheet. Um, he used to lay a sheet of gold on his Milanese risotto. Here we go. I've got a sheet of gold here. So let me show you. Get your booklet and you open up. I think everybody can see that. You open up your booklet and there's a sheet of gold, right? Yes. So if you gorgeous. just try to move that, you're going to lose half of it. So what I do is hold it at the seam right here. That way it's not going to go anywhere on you. Then I'm going to let it free fall. Oh, there she is. There it is. And I'm and again, this has got natural moisture. And there you have it. Wow. So I'm going to lift this up. Um, I know the first time I used my gold sheets, I held my breath because it's so thin. Uh, I just didn't want it to. <laughs> I know. Fly away. But you, you, you can't have a fan on. No. And you can't have your windows open. Just as a note, because if it's windy, no. It's yeah. windy. You don't want to lose it. It's way too precious. Yeah, it is. But isn't that gorgeous? So you ju I just did a tart tartan, and now I feel like it's fit for a king or a queen. Right, absolutely. Or you know? Okay. Well, thank you. Um, I am. I'm going to sneak another one in here because 
We, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Melissa's Produce is the biggest uh, supplier of produce in the United States. And I am now working with them as one of my suppliers and they donated all the fruits and spices for today's class. And so we have edible flowers. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna let Lynn describe what she did with edible flowers and this chocolate cake that I made yesterday. Okay, what I did, we gilded, first we gilded the plate. We laid a sheet of gold on the plate just to make it look really special. Uh, place the chocolate dessert. And then I took, again, my tweezers and my, there they are, my box of gold petals. And I just thought I'd do a semi circle around the edge. And these are all edible flowers, by the way. Isn't that gorgeous? And I'm going to show you a little trick with flowers. I just placed a semicircle of gold petals around there. Um, then these have wilted because we did these yesterday in the master class. But I do want to show you how you can gild an edible flower. Um, because flowers are waxy, right? You cannot uh, just automatically uh, put gold on here because the, the wax will make it kind of roll off. So once again, and I learned this from a bar chef, believe it or not, and he was uh, gilding the edges of his flowers for a cocktail uh, competition. And he taught me this and he painted the edges of his flowers with honey. And again, you can use honey or agave, um, whatever's your delight. And he did an excellent job of teaching me how to do this. This one, you wanna use as small as brush as you can to edge with. Then you sprinkle out a little bit of gold as we've been doing when we were rimming and just take your flower now and roll it around in. Oh, this is pretty. This is pretty. Oh, and it comes gorgeous. out, it comes out edged. I'm going to put it on top so you can see it. That's not where I would place it for real life. I would place one or the other. If you were going to do a flower, I think maybe I would only do a, um, another one petal there or put this on the side of the dish. But I just wanted you to see how easy that was to do with honey and then sprinkling some out gold out here and just tap, tap, tap. Pretty easy. Anybody can do that. I love how you put that gold leaf on the plate. Too. Oh, well. That is a stunning. I hope you all, yes, you can see it shining. Um, it just adds... Uh, imagine a birthday, an anniversary, yeah, any yeah. kind of celebration. Putting, yeah, putting that on the plate is gorgeous. Yeah. Okay, so Lynn, yes. we have two grand finales. Okay, okay, we're going to do this quickly. <laughs> well, I, I'm just so excited because I made, I made like five, do five dozen gingerbread men and women. Yeah. And uh, Lynn, this is Lynn's idea with the cookie tree. It can be used for any occasion. Uh, but it, you'll see that it's it's way over the top, but we'll start with the cookies. So we have a tray of cookies. Here are my, here are my cookie cutters, one girl, one boy. And I, I made dozens of them. I made them all different thicknesses. The, the thinner ones I like the better. I think they taste better. And then as soon as they got out of the oven, I poked a hole in their bodies using a metal straw because I knew later that I would string a piece of ribbon through them to be hung on a tree. Correct. So, um, but I need help, Lynn, because ah. what, what can I do to make these guys? I've painted some, I put some clothing on one of them, I used some white icing, but I'd like to know your ideas. How do I make this really special? Well, again, because Tasha baked these, and they're just not fresh out of the oven. Um, the surface of these are coarse, dry. Now, had they just come out of the oven and we had that little bit of butter um, providing a little moisture and attack, I would just automatically gild them. But, but again, because rightfully so, they've dried, they've cooled. Hit them again, take, give it a breath, just a breath of moisture. And 
hit it with a little snow. <laughs> snow is silver. There you go. Look at that. And it stays because it's, it's wet um, or moist. And then we can do the same thing with, oh, we can spray this one with a little bit of, a little bit of the silver. And then I, for the holidays, I have no objection to mixing like a little silver here and then silver and gold. So that when you hang these on the cookie tree, you've got a little bit of silver and a little bit of gold. Oh, Looks I very, love gold and silver. And as, as Tasha's bringing out the tree, um, this was years ago, I, I discovered a big root um, at the flower market. So I took the root and I painted it chocolate. So this root has been painted chocolate and a nice matte brown. And I made, as you can see, tons of little cookies. They were shaped in stars and oh, there we go. gingerbread you. man and bells and just about everything you could see. At that time, and I, we did this yesterday, you can dip your cookie in gold and, I, excuse me, in chocolate. And because the chocolate is still moist, then we hit it with our, 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 gold, our gold shaker. And then to hang it on the tree. So it's really kind of a nice little idea, especially with all of us in pretty much lockdown for a family. And um, you take the root and I hope you can see this. I just, I just uh, solidified it in a very tall vase and I filled it with red crystals at the bottom. And then if I back up, you can probably see that it's just a tree with all kinds of cookies hanging in it. Um, I've done it for Mother's Day. And when I do like Mother's Day tree, I would fill the bottom like with pink sand or pink crystals or combination of pink and green, very beautiful. And do, do a bunch of heart cookies and sprinkle them with gold and silver, dip them in chocolate or not. Um, whatever it is that you decide to do, it, it's really kind of special. And then we kind of went crazy yesterday after all day and we hung a bunch of ornaments in here too. Do not have to, you can do, do whatever you want to do, but it's kind of fun and it's pretty easy to do. So I have a question on the tree. Yeah. Would you serve that as a dessert course and just say, and, oh, and yeah. here's, here's a centerpiece, but I, you can also eat it? I would do that. If I was going to serve it as a centerpiece, I would probably only hang a cookies on it. Okay. Just so people didn't work confused, like, oh, wait a minute, I can't eat that. <laughs> you know? So if I was going to make this my centerpiece for dessert, absolutely. I would do it all that way. And I would just put the cookies on it so it was crystal clear that... You could eat everything Got except it. the root. Well, okay. it, it is a stunner. That is yeah. stunning. It's Thank beautiful so in person, I have to say. So for our grand finale today, and in honor of Network Provence, uh, we have made a bouche de Noël. Uh, maybe it's she a made season. the bouche de Noël, not me. <laughs> it took a lot of time. It took five, at least five hours to put it together. So for those of you who have, who have made it, it's, it's a sponge cake that you roll, and I used a mocha cream in the inside and a buttercream on the outside. And then I made mushroom meringues, so I made the tops and then the stems. I ground up some chocolate, we sprinkled it with sugar. Um, so we went a little crazy <laughs> on this, but I know in France, you can go to your local patisserie and buy gorgeous bouche de Noël, so maybe, maybe it's easier to do that. But uh, we really like to we really like to get into it and and uh, we're going to show you ours and uh, let's see tell me if you can see it and maybe we'll switch the view now there you go thank you so um we have all kinds of fun things on here so i ground up some chocolate so it, it really is meant to look like a log and this is meant to be like dirt literally so there's, there's dirt around, around this log, and uh, we have gilded some pine cones. Um, I'm just gonna do a quick demo with the mushrooms. Um, if you want it to look like it just snowed, use some powdered sugar. So there's some fresh snow on the plate. And then 
with the meringue, probably most of you have made meringues at home because you're in France and you're very inspired. So I made, like I said, the tops and the bottoms of the meringue. And, and then what I do is I, I'm literally carefully carving a hole in the top of the mushroom. The top of the mushroom, but the bottom of the top. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. And so then what I do is I have the bottom of the mushroom. Well, let, me, let me tilt that. Isn't that cool? <laughs> so there's your mushroom. And then what I want to do, I, put, I, have a, I have a place on the Bouche de Noël where I put a mushroom without any, any, any sprinklings on it because I want your ideas. And, and the last thing I want to talk about and tell us what to do. When I was in France, I went to Aviv Garnier and I found my initials in a vintage stamp, wow. a sealing wax stamp. And so I made my own chocolate seals. And then Lynn taught me how to put shimmer dust on them. But this, this lets me brand my own bouche de Noël. Not, you know, and, and so it's, it's just a great little trick to have. But again, I'm gonna say, Lynn, help me out, make this better. And what can you do to make that more sparkly? Well, <clears throat> I mean, obviously everybody's gonna customize and do it their own little way. I mean, I was over there painting or gilding the edge. Of, of the greenery, right? But we've got already the gilded little star anise here and one of your, yes, one of your, uh, one of your seals with your initials on it. So I think in terms of the, the, the uh, mushroom, personally, I think that it should be gold because we've got little hints of gold everywhere. This is, of course, meringue, yes. and it's it's crispy on top, or you know, uh, hardened. So give it a breath of moisture. Breath don't need much more than that. And then I would hit it with just ever so slightly a touch of gold. Much more than that, I wouldn't do uh, because we've already done all kinds of stuff. So I, I just think this that's just a perfect little touch because it picks up your pine cones and your greenery and your logs and your seal. So I would go very delicate with that. Well, I think this is a great grand finale for your techniques because we, we've already incorporated the star anise that you've done for the first cocktail. And uh, we have our gilded pine cones, we have gilded uh, cra uh, crab apples and the beautiful uh, pine branch that you put on as the display here. I mean, I like the pop of green because it really feels like this log just came out of the forest. I just chopped it down. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to eat it. And I'm serving it to you. So, uh, Lynn. Yes. High five. There we go. We did. I, I love working with Lynn. Can we change our view again? <laughs> and if everybody could unmute themselves, yeah. we would love to hear from you. We just love working together and we love working with edible gold and, and, and silver, and we love the holidays. So we, we were so happy to jump out of bed this morning to be with you all. We really were. Um, it's, it's a little early for us and we haven't had enough coffee, but please let Don't us know. Don't worry, we'll get more. We'll get coffee. <laughs> please let us know your questions and comments. We're ready, we're all ears. Yes, any questions at all about the gold or anything? Um, and Rebecca, you have to unmute yourself. Too. Yeah, I, I don't know. I keep on thinking I'm unmute anyway. I say it looks too good to eat. <laughs> the last thing that I was just going to show you, these beautiful seals oh, yes. that Tasha made with her um, initials in it. I use the shimmer and the luster on these. And less is best. My little brush, a little bit of shimmer, and you go from chocolate, plain, to a beautiful, beautiful... You can see the difference here. Just right. gives it a beautiful luster. And that is, you know, that's all you need is just that little kiss of, of sheen. You know, the first time I made this for my, my Los Angeles friends, 
Uh, one, of, one of my friends said, is, is the pine cone chocolate inedible? <laughs> and I said, no, I'm not that crazy. I mean, it is possible, but I, I'm, not Boy, a I'm not a chocolate artist. Um, I do my best. That would be hard. But uh, these, these are not edible, if anybody was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> no, not eating those. So I always try to you know, interact with my environment. And when I go on hikes, um, even in Los Angeles, I, I'm able to find pine cones. Um, and so that's really part of what I use for my, my decoration. So we're, we're all ears for comments and questions. Well, that was extremely generous and creative and taking oh. cooking to another dimension. Oh, it was our pleasure, really. Really, because, I mean, we kind of feed off each other, you know. Well, that's also really nice, and I can we can feel the energy transatlantic. Good, uh -huh. good. <laughs> I'm glad. But um, I mean, what are you going to do with all that food now? Are you? Is that breakfast? Well, wow. <laughs> you know, we're on lockdown for two weeks, so I'm stuck uh -huh. here for two weeks. We're going to just eat for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, it's. It is uh, fantastic though for parties and giving a really amazing impression. It, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's really nice and brings that festivity to it all. And, and again, remember, you don't have to do, like for example, when we did the gooseberries and we did all three gilded on our, our little skewer, you can do one, just one little touch. It's all, it, it will stand out to your guests and they'll know that you are honoring them at your banquet table. Yeah, I like um, the idea of a banquet. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that book is great. You will flip if you get a copy of it and you can read it. It's really something. Very interesting. What what I'd like to be what I'd like to do is, uh, I, Rebecca, I can send to you. I can send you Lynn's information and, and the website. Um, my partner Barbara Pitcher, if you can see my apron, she's based in La Crede near Chateau Lacoste, so she's in Provence. And we do the culinary tours together. So I'll give you that information. Like I said, we're trying to get to Marrakesh uh, in, a, in a year. Um, so we're, we're so excited about that. Um, we're, we're, we're just moving in new directions in the meantime. But we'd love to give you information on the book uh, because I, like I said, Lynn is a food historian and that's always just the most fascinating thing, especially for those of you who live in France Food is such an important part of the culture, and I really miss that connection with the ingredients in the food because I love living in Los Angeles too, but it's kind of a fast-paced uh, environment. Even though we're on lockdown, <laughs> the, the, the attention to food and the ingredients, unless it, I'm with my friends who are just as nuts about food as I am, it's, it, it, it's not as intense, but the intens intensity of what I've learned from living in France, because I've been living there part-time for 10 years, is just the, the real homage to, to food and the ingredients and to the preparation. And I know that when I'm at a dinner party in France, we're already talking about what we're gonna eat and what we're gonna plan to eat yeah. in the next week, month. So it's like, it's a super focus. Yeah, and uh, that's one of one of my best French lessons that I could could share. That's lovely. Well, I'm I'm going to stop the recording in um, now, and I just want to say this was really fantastic and generous of you to give uh, all this time, especially so early in the morning on your side of the the pond. Just and, think uh, of how productive our day is going to be. We got such an early start, you right? Have, I'm so jazzed. <laughs> you got the day ahead. Uh, you're you're just charged up now and ready to uh, ready carry to go. On the way that you've been uh, really giving us such a great uh, demonstration. So thank you. We very wish much. all of you were with us because the the best reward for me is when I have guests. Who then can enjoy the food? So yes. we really do wish you were with us. That's I wish you were with us as well. Looking at all of that, looks. Um, we wish we were there to try it as well. Looks amazing. Yep. And and just from here to there, we wish you all happy, happy holidays. Really happy, safe holidays for all of us. Thank you so Joy much. Noel. Joy Noel. Joy Noel. Joy Noel.